Here I'm going to go over DNA profiling and on this title slide we see a kind of a gel um, which shows an example, visual example of how DNA might be profiled. I'm going to go into a little bit more of the details here. So starting with partial DNA profiles, rarely do you get a complete 100% match. So these partial profiles are defined as any locus is missing uh, an allele. This is considered or classified as a partial profile. There's a variety of reasons for their occurrence, such as a, de a, a degraded sample, which can occur either on site or in storage over time, or simply limited quantities of DNA uh, material was collected. However, partial profiles may still be helpful in determining if an individual could be included or excluded in the investigation. So just because you have a partial profile doesn't mean that all is null and void. They can still be utilized um, in the collection of evidence. Now applying weight to the match. So here we have an example of since any two human genomes differ at about 3 million sites, it's 3 million sites, no two persons barring identical twins have the same DNA sequence. So unique identification with DNA typing is therefore possible, provided that enough sites of variation are examined. So this is where you can have a partial profile, but you don't want it too partially broken, because you won't have enough sites to um, be able to provide any sort of weight to the match. However, they say that two patterns match without providing any scientific validity or estimate, or at least upon the upper bound of the frequency with which such matches might occur by chance is meaningless. So this is why you just can't say, oh, they match at, you know, 100 sites, match at 100,000 sites. Uh, there's, there's, you need to have a weight to that match. You need to have a way of comparison, comparing that. You need to have some sort of stats or mathematical statistics to be able to give weight to how accurate or what those numbers actually tell you. So what's developed is what's called the random match probability, or RMP. This is the probability that two randomly selected individuals have identical phenotypes, genotypes, by chance alone. With the current panel of genetic markers available to forensic testing, it is not uncommon for the reciprocal of the random match probably, probably determined for a genetic profile to exceed the world's population several fold. So this means with the details that we've been able to get and the amount of DNA sequence we've been able to um, analyze, we're able to provide a very high statistical power. A random match probability of less than 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th will convey at least 99% confidence that the uh, profile is unique in the population. So that's very strong. Scientists can't come out and say it's guaranteed, it's 100% match, but if you're looking at at least 99% confidence level, that can provide a strong weight to that data that you've collected when you're putting your um, crime scene evaluation together. Now the random match probability is not a chance that someone else is guilty. Again, this is only a piece of information. It is also not the chance that someone else left the bloodstain, and it is not a chance of the defendant not being guilty. So these are important things to consider. A lot of people think all, all I need to do in a crime scene is find DNA and match it to the potential suspect, and they'll be deemed guilty. There is a lot more that goes into that. You only need probability to match the DNA profiles, but you also need other supporting evidence to be able to support claims as far as what may have gone on at the crime scene to link that suspect uh, to being there and to be there not only be there physically present, but to also be there physically present at the time of the crime.